Atrial fibrillation, or AFib, is a heart condition that causes the heart to race and beat in an irregular rhythm. People often say that when they have an episode of AFib, they feel as though a fish is flopping around in their chest, or that their heart feels like it will explode. AFib can increase your risk of heart failure, stroke, and even death. Because of these risks, and because AFib can get worse over time, it is important to have it diagnosed early and cared for appropriately. AFib is the most common type of irregular heartbeat or arrhythmia. It affects over 2.5 million people in the United States alone. Your heart is a muscle that acts like a pump. With each beat, it squeezes or contracts to push blood to the rest of your body. Your heart has four chambers. The two upper chambers are called atria. The two lower chambers are called ventricles. Under normal conditions, the upper and lower chambers of the heart work together to pump blood throughout the body. The bloodstream enters the atrium where blood is pumped to the ventricles in a regular and coordinated way. From there, blood is pumped from the ventricles to various parts of the body. A healthy heart beats in a regular, steady rhythm or pattern. Notice how the heart beats evenly and uniformly. In a healthy heart, electrical signals travel through the heart in a regular pattern, as seen here. These electrical impulses originate in a special section of the atrium and travel through the heart in a regular pattern. Each signal ultimately causes the heart to beat. In AFib, the top two chambers of the heart, or atria, beat very fast and in an irregular pattern that is out of rhythm. Notice how the atria appear to quiver and are uncoordinated. Due to this irregular pattern, the atria do not coordinate with the ventricles and the heart is out of rhythm. AFib occurs when electrical signals start in the wrong place and misfire. The faulty signals cause the atria to quiver and not contract completely. Notice how the signals spread in a rapid, disorganized way. Your doctor may perform a test called an electrocardiogram or an EKG to see your heart's electrical activity and rhythm. During an EKG, small electrodes are placed on specific parts of your arms, chest, and legs using small stickers. When the heart beats, the electrodes send signals to the EKG machine. The EKG measures the electrical impulses or waves shown here as lines. See the differences between a healthy heart and a heart in AFib? In a normal heart, beats are evenly spaced and show a regular pattern. In AFib, the waves appear more chaotic and random. While the causes of AFib are often unknown, there are a number of things that increase the chances you might get it. Some of these include age, family history, smoking, high blood pressure, or hypertension and obesity. Also, if you have any of the following conditions, you're more at risk of AFib, heart failure, diabetes, or coronary artery disease. The more of these risk factors you have, the more likely it is you might experience AFib. Be sure to discuss your full medical history with your healthcare provider. AFib often gets worse as time goes on. It's important to take care of it early because the longer your heartbeat is out of rhythm, the harder it is to return to normal. In this chart, the red lines represent AFib episodes and the blue lines represent times when the heart is in rhythm. When many patients are first diagnosed, they experience periods of AFib that may come and go. These episodes may be momentary or last for days, but generally go away on their own. This is called paroxysmal AFib. In some situations, AFib may not go away on its own. Your doctor may need to perform a procedure or provide medicine for a cardioversion to bring your heart back to normal rhythm. This is called persistent AFib. In some people who have had AFib for a long time, the heart may not be able to return to a normal rhythm at all. This is called permanent AFib. Notice that over time, the red areas are larger and more frequent. This is why it's important to talk to your health care provider to be sure that you're doing all you can to keep your heart in rhythm. There are many signs and symptoms of AFib. Many describe an uneven, flopping, or racing heartbeat. 
AFib can make you feel lightheaded, dizzy, or even short of breath. Some people feel tired or weak. Others experience chest pain or discomfort, such as palpitations. These symptoms might be subtle or severe, and they may come and go, and you may not experience any symptoms at all. In fact, 60% of patients don't even know when they're having an AFib episode. If you have AFib, it's important to know that while you may not feel symptoms all of the time, your heart may still be out of rhythm, and you're still at risk for other complications like remodeling or stroke. If left untreated, AFib can change the size and even the shape of your heart through a process called remodeling. Remodeling can cause permanent changes in your heart in a very short amount of time, potentially just a few days. Because of AFib, your heart has to work much harder, and heart tissue can be damaged. Notice how the heart increases in size and its walls thicken. Even if you're currently being treated for AFib, it's important to understand if your management program is addressing all the risks associated with the disease. During AFib, blood can collect or pool in your heart and cause a clot to form. If this happens, the clot can travel from the heart to the brain and cause a stroke. If you have AFib, you're five times more likely to have a stroke than someone who doesn't have it. It's important to talk to your health care provider about your risk of stroke and how to reduce it. You may feel exhausted and weak as a result of your heart not pumping properly. While some people with AFib may be able to lead a normal lifestyle, in some cases, having AFib can keep you from enjoying exercise and everyday activities. If you have AFib, you're four times more likely to end up in the hospital three or more times than those who don't have the disease. It's important that you continue to talk to your doctor about managing your AFib, even if you are not currently experiencing symptoms. The AFib treatment guidelines for healthcare providers recommend a comprehensive approach to treating all the risks of AFib. The guidelines prioritize three treatment goals, rate control, maintenance of normal rhythm, and stroke prevention. Healthcare providers may provide a range of treatments to jointly manage the different risks and symptoms of AFib. There are a number of ways that AFib is treated. Your doctor may prescribe a medication to slow down the pace or rate at which your heart beats. Notice that the rate medication slows down the heart rate. However, the heart continues to beat irregularly and out of rhythm. Rate control medications do not correct the irregular heart rhythm associated with AFib. They slow the heart rate down, but don't address the irregular rhythm or pattern of AFib. Your doctor may recommend a treatment designed to more specifically address the rhythm of your heart. When rhythm control medication is used, the heart beats in normal rhythm, but remains fast. Rhythm treatment regulates your heart rhythm but may have little or no effect on the rate at which your heart beats. Combination of rate and rhythm control treatments may be recommended to reduce the heart rate and maintain the normal heart rhythm. Rate control medication is used to slow the heart rate down. When rhythm control is added, the goal is to have the heart beat at a normal rhythm. Other treatments for AFib may include surgical and non-surgical procedures and implanted devices. If medicine has not been effective, your doctor may perform a procedure called a cardioversion, in which electrical current is used to restore a normal heart rhythm. Radiofrequency ablation, sometimes called catheter ablation, is a procedure that stops the heart from setting off the faulty electrical signals that cause the chaotic heartbeats of AFib. Surgical ablation is a surgical procedure to destroy the cells causing abnormal heart rhythm. It may be used when other treatments have not worked. The surgeon treats the surface of the heart directly rather than relying on catheters and x-rays to reach the heart. For some patients, a small battery-powered device called an atrial pacemaker may be implanted under the skin to generate electrical signals to regulate heartbeat. 